I want to talk about uh, some concepts dealing with not going back, uh, dealing dealing with not going back, and we'll get a we'll we'll get a fancier title uh, for the for the media ministry. But right now, uh, the title is is how not to go back, <laughs> how not to go back. God is doing something new. Come on, shout! He's doing something new. I need you to affirm that, decree that, declare that, that God is doing something new for me right now. And what he says here in the book of Isaiah is, is he says, remember, uh, the King James says like this, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Remember ye not the former things. The issue we have is, is letting go of those old things, those past things, those past ideas. And old stuff is not always hurtful stuff. Sometimes it's not always hurtful that I need to let go of. When we think about letting go and letting go of the past, most of the time we think about only letting go of what has hurt me, what has harmed me. But there are some things that just don't serve me anymore. It's not that they were bad things, but they just don't serve me anymore. You know, on my on my journey, Mimi laughed because in a meeting they asked me when did I start preaching, and so I just proudly said that it was April of 1998. And she says, "Oh, was I born?" You know, you know. She just had to throw shade right there. Uh, <laughs> you know, was I born? And I'm like, "Okay, little girl." <laughs> Before I knew it, I said, shut up, Mimi. <laughs> you know, but still, <laughs> there, there, are, there are journeys that this is a journey I've been on. And I've had a lot of experiences. And even some of my spiritual experiences, there are things that have been a blessing. But guess what? They no longer serve where I am now. And as long as I'm holding on to those traditions and those ideas and holding on to those opinions, then that's what I'm going to continue to focus on. That's the only thing that I will remember. So in the scripture, God says what? He says, remember not the form of things. See, this was a time of transition for Israel. Shall transition. He gave this word, this, this commandment to remember not the former things, the old things, or, or, or consider the old things of what took place in the past. Why? Because you're in a transition. You're leaving from this one place to go to another place. So you're leaving from one set of ideas to go to another set of ideas. You're moving from one neighborhood to go to a another neighborhood. You're moving from one state to another state. And as you shift, guess what? You're going to shift and transcend cultures. So there's some things that just will not serve you in the next place. I moved from Dallas and I came here with a lot of coats. I have all kinds of coats. I've got leather coats, fur coats. Man, I got every kind of coat you could imagine. All kinds of jackets. Baseball jackets, you name it. Quarterly. Because we had cold weather there. But they rarely come out of the closet. And every time we move, guess what? I take all of these coats right along with me because they belong to me. But guess what? Remember Remember not the former things. Those things don't serve me in this climate, but maybe once or twice a year, unless I travel somewhere else. There's some things that we hold on to that's not necessarily bad. The Bible says all things are lawful, but not expedient. It's not that it's a bad thing, but it no longer serves you where you are. Are. There are things we picked up growing up. There are things we picked up from our parents, their ideas, their concepts, and it shaped our paradigm. But God says what? Remember ye not the former things. You will never move into the new thing. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. I will do. Shout God's doing it right now. God is doing a new things. New beginnings do not start with you. New beginnings start with God. Only God can call you into a new beginning. People move from one place to the next and they take the same drama with them. 
People shift from one relationship to the next and they take the same baggage with them. The same issue you had with the last spouse, guess what? You'll find you got the same issues in the new spouse. Why? Because it wasn't changing the spouse that was the problem. It was you that was the problem. And so you will continue to attract and bring these people, places, and things in your life. So God says, I'm giving you a new beginning, meaning that the slate is being wiped clean, and what you've taken from the past is not going to serve you where I'm taking you. God said, behold, one version of the scripture says, see see the commandment is you got to see you've got to open up your eyes in the spirit to see that God is doing something new I want you to declare I see something new come on I see something new coming into my life not the same drama that I've continued to have not the same uh, problems the same stresses the same friends come on somebody shout there's something new there's a change that's getting ready to take place in my life there's a shift there's a change I feel like preaching tonight in my atmosphere somebody shout it's new God is doing something new and he says see it I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. The promise to you is that something is getting ready to happen. It's about to spring forth. Anything that springs forth, it comes uh, unexpected. Come on, your new seasons come unexpected. We find ourselves in new places and we don't know why we are in that particular place or, or a new career or, or, or something has happened and I'm in this new place. It just sprung up. How did I get here? I don't know how I got here. I don't know how this thing just happened. But just overnight, it, it's something new. Shout is something new that's getting ready to happen for me. But I I will never be able to embrace the Bible says that we cannot put um, new wine into old wine skins. See, you're trying to put new stuff into an old skin. That's why some people uh, can't grow in God because they're trying to put new revelation into an old way of thinking, into an old order of thinking, or to an old religious way of thinking. You got to shift that. Even a snake has sense enough to change his skin sometimes. Come on. Here we are. We don't ever change or, or be transitional or, or be open or pliable to what God is doing. God is doing something new in your life right now whether you know it or not and some of us are going into something new but we yelling kicking and screaming it's just like a child you know how children are they don't want to try to slide they don't want to do this they don't want to go they're afraid of the men in the costume you try to take them to sesame street live and they're running from grover and oscar they see them in the costume and, and they don't know what to do they're running they're screaming and sometimes as a parent to get them to overcome that fear what do we do we drag them in there now you know we hope we don't traumatize them along the way but we drag them in there we drag them we go down the slide with them we get we get on the bike with them we walk alongside them until you before you know it they're enjoying it so that they that now you got to drag them out there's some things that's happening in your life right now that's new that God is dragging you into and you yelling you kicking you're screaming you're trying to hang in there you trying to hold out you're trying to hold back to the former thing because the former thing is what's familiar to you but God even said to Israel he told him he said before they cross the Jordan he said you have not gone this way before let me tell you there's some new things that's getting ready to take place that's happening in your life there are paths that you've not gone on before but shout embrace the moment See, I can't embrace. You've got to embrace this moment. God is not in the past. God isn't in the future. But God is right here, right now. Even when Jesus taught the model prayer, he said, give us this day 
our daily bread. Not give us bread from the past or give us bread for tomorrow, but he said give us this day. Why this day? Because God is right now. God is evenly present. God is not in Monday. God was not in Tuesday. God is in Wednesday. God's not even over in Thursday or Friday because Isaiah said he declared the ending from the beginning. What happened is, is God already declared the end of the thing. All he did was, was backed up time so we could get in sync and get in time. So in order for me to experience this new thing, this new season, shout I must embrace the moment. I got to align with this thing. I don't like it. Come on, let's be honest. I, I don't like it. This is different. This is new. This is really not my cup of tea. This is really not where I saw myself being, but I'm just going to embrace the moment. See, if you don't embrace the moment, then you'll make, make the mistake of trying to go back. See, if you don't embrace this moment, you will make the grave mistake of fighting to go back. I watch people fight to go back. I've done that myself. You know what we do? We fight for limitations, don't we? We find ourselves fighting for limitations. There's some people you can never give them a positive outcome. This is why I just listen to people now. I, I, I listen because they tell me this is wrong and this is wrong and, and with, you know, with the way my brain works because I see it and, and I'm a thinker and I can come up with all kinds of ideas. My challenge is in the execution of the ideas, you know, but I can, I, I have it. it. It's just the, the execution. If I can get some, some folks to the execute it, hey, it's going to be a great thing, but, but it's going to sound real good by the time I get to drawing it out for you. But there's some people when you do that and you try to give them every possibility for something to work, they come back with every possibility for it not to work. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. You know, somebody was telling me, well, I'm trying to do this, but the money is over there if you do it with the youth. I said, well, why don't you switch your model and do it? Well, I don't want to deal with children. Well, you know, we'll stay broke over there trying to deal with this group of people. Come on, somebody. You got to understand that we have got to be open to the new thing so that we'll stop fighting to stay in what's old. People are miserable right now and unhappy because they have fought to stay in something old. They have fought to stay in something old instead of embracing the new. Instead of embracing what God is doing in this moment. This is what Israel did in Numbers the 14th chapter. The first verse said, and all the congregation lifted their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, listen to this, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or we, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. See, in that transition, because there were some giants along the way. There were some enemies along the way. There were some challenges along the way. There were some slim days along the way. Y'all talk back to me. There were some slim moments along the way. They said, good look, we'd had it better in Egypt. We'd rather die in Egypt. We know we were enslaved there, but we would rather die there. At least we had leeks and onions. Who wants to eat leeks and onions? You know, at least we had this. We had it better over there. That's the way we do. We cry. The Bible said what? They wept and cried all night. And they said, you know what? Forget Moses and what you're talking about, Moses. We're going to get somebody else to take us back. Three things happen when you decide to go back. What are those three things? Number one, you reject God's plan. 
you reject God's plan. When you're trying to go back with what God has brought you out of, you're rejecting God's plan. He has a new plan for you. Isn't that what he said in Jeremiah? He said, he said I've, got a, I've got a plan for you. So God has a plan in this. It, it was never God's intent for Israel to be in the wilderness for 40 years. But their constant murmuring and complaining is what kept them in the wilderness. They were only supposed to have been in the wilderness for a few days. It was a few days journey. But their complaining, their striving to go back is what kept them in the wilderness walking in circles for 40 years. Never realizing God was keeping them. They had manna and quail every day. They had a, a cloud of fire at night to keep them warm. They had a, a cloud by day uh, to keep them cool from the sun. And the soles of their shoes never ran out. Can you imagine a pair of Jordans that lasted for 40 years? They walked in circles every single day. That got Carrington's attention. That they walked in circles Every single day. Why? The Bible said, God said they were going to walk in this, in this, have this wilderness. He said, because this group is not going in. So it took 40 years for that group, that generation to die so the next generation could go into the promised land. Now, what is God really trying to say to us? Let's, let's bring this so we can apply this. What, is, what do we need to do? We need to let some mindsets die. We need to allow some opinions to die. That's some stuff that's no longer a part of us. It's some relationships. We got to let it die. Somebody say, pull the plug on that thing. Say, as long as it's on life support, you still hoping, wishing, and praying, and should have, and could have, and would have. Pull the plug. That's what you got to do. It's hopeless. That thing is over with. I'm embracing something new. They were fighting, striving, crying. To go back. So when you decide to go back into what God has called you out of, into that past thing, mindset, whatever it is, number one, you're rejecting God's plan. God has a plan for you. You're saying to God, I don't want that plan. I'd rather walk in this wilderness 40 years crying, trying to figure it out. There's a song that said, I would rather be regretting by myself than to be forgetting with somebody new. I'd rather just sit in my house and just cry all night long rather than embracing that this is something new. God shout, God's got a plan. Affirm this, I accept the plan of God for my life. You gotta begin to tell yourself that. You gotta begin to speak that to yourself. I accept, I embrace the plan of God for my life life I, I i'm telling you it's one of the, the 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 strangest season of my life ever is right now but constantly i have to say i accept i embrace this plan of god for my life i have a friend that oftentimes will say to me you know that i confide in and and that friend will usually say to me this ain't your life. I've been knowing you since you were 18 years old. This ain't your life. You've always had a grand life. This, 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 you, you, you came in, you know, grand. That was you. It was always, you know, just boom, theatrics when you, this ain't your life. No, I'm walking out of plan. Shout, I got a plan. God's got a plan. And I embrace this plan. The third thing you're going to do, the second thing you're going to do, I'm already on three. The second thing is, is when you decide to go back, you reject God's promise. The promise to Israel is that you're going to come into a land that flows with milk and honey. That was the promise. You're going to go to a land that flows with milk and honey. That's what he said in the eighth verse. He's going to bring you to this land. Could give you a land that flows with milk and honey. This is your promised land. So when you decide, I want to go back to Egypt because I know how to handle Egypt. See, we like to deal with what we know we can control. 
See, it's familiar to me so I can hang out there because that's a situation I can control. You see, I'm not going over there. I can't control that situation. I have nobody I can call, no favors over there. See, when I go into this new place, I got to be led by revelation. I got to be led by the spirit. I've got to allow God to lead me. God's going to give me some new connections. God's going to provide for me. So right now, I'm embracing the promise. Shout out, I embrace the promises of God. See, when God gave you that plan, that plan came with a promise. God's plan has a promise connected with it. But when you decide that I want to stay into, in Egypt, what was bondage to me, when I want to stay into what's been bondage, when I want to stay in that thing that's been holding me back, when I want to stay in that place of limitation, stay in that place of lack, then I'm canceling out the promise. I'm saying, God, I don't want the promise. Just let me have what's in front of me. That's what I want, the past. No promise, the past. I don't want promise. Let me just deal with the past. And then the third thing, the third thing that you do is, is you reject the providence of God. You reject the providence of God. What is providence? It's God's divine protection. Listen, God ain't going to give you that plan and bring you to that wilderness place if God can keep you in the wilderness. He provided for them. The Lord was there. The Lord was, was providing for them. God was making tremendous ways for them. God was doing something unexplainable. And that's how most of our lives are right now. If you just be honest for a moment and just tell the truth, God is just doing something unexplainable right now. You, you, you just tell the truth. You know, you, you, you don't have the education for what you're doing right now. You really don't have the pedigree for what you, who you're connected with right now. You, you really don't have the money for what you're able to do right now. But God is doing it. Come on, somebody. It's his providence. Will y'all talk to me tonight? It's his providence. So every time I decide that I want to go back, then I reject God's plan. I reject God's promise. And I begin to reject God's providence. God's protection. God sustaining me. God providing for me. God keeping me. God making a way for me. God opening doors where there were no doors. What did he say in Isaiah? He said, I'm going to give you rivers in the desert. Come on, are you ready for a river in the desert? He said, I'm going to give you rivers in the desert. And he said, I'm going to give you a road in the wilderness, a river in a desert place to refresh you. To sustain you. And he's going to give you a road in the wilderness. Which is a path. If, if there is no way. There can be no progress. Jesus said I am the way. The truth and the life. If there is no way. There can be no progress. If we don't have a way. To get there. We can't progress. If I don't have a way. To get to China. I can't progress to China. I can't get to China from Dallas, from Houston, in my car. It just ain't going to work. I can't get there in my car. I need another way. Come on, somebody. I got to I gotta have a way. I, I got to get on a plane or a ship or something, but I got to find me another way. If there is no way, then I can't progress. Somebody say, God's made a way for me. Come on, God has made a way for you. I need you to know that tonight. I need you to receive this and know that God has made a way for you. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Very quickly, I'm going to give you these last couple of scriptures here. How do I forget? What, what, do, I, what do I do? Because where's the problem? The problem is my memories. It's in my mind. It's in my mind. Let's start at 10 and 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Shout stronghold. If you're taking notes, write this down. What is a stronghold? A demonically induced pattern of thinking. 
a demonically induced pattern of thinking. The devil didn't create the stronghold. We do. We allow demonic situations to entice us, to influence us, to dwell in wrong patterns of thinking, wrong mindsets, and we create what? A stronghold. So if I want to get out the stronghold, I have to change the way I think. The prophet Nathan came to David, and he told David, he said, come out of that stronghold. David was down there in the stronghold. He was hiding. He was praying. What am I supposed to do? They would get ready to stone him and kill him. Nathan came to him and said, come out of that stronghold. It's time for you to get to Jerusalem. You've been in that place long enough. You've been, you've been held back. You got to come out of that stronghold. You ain't going to come out of that stronghold until you change how you think. Until you change how you perceive. See that I'm doing a new thing. That's my perception. See? So what do we have to do? Because that stronghold is keeping me from seeing very quickly that God is doing something new. See, I'm seeing this as failure. Because this is, I'm seeing this as failure. I'm thinking I'm failing when absolutely God is expanding me. Sometimes God reduces to expand. Even in an expansion project, sometimes they tear down the old building. And then you have all these little people out here that want to protest. We just love that building for its architectural and historical value. To hell with the building. Let it go. It's time for something new. Come on, shout. It's time for something new. That's what the Egyptian pharaohs would do every time they got a new pharaoh. They would say, go and wipe all the faces off the statue and put my face up there. That king is dead. He's gone. Let's put, put my face there. So all the pharaohs go through, cut the nose off, change it, rearrange it. I'm putting something new there. What does he say? I've got to do this. This is in my mind. Shout, it's in my mind. It's my thinking. It's this stronghold. So what did he tell me to do? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty how? Through God to pull down to the pulling down of strongholds. So through God, through the divine, through the word of God, I got to pull down these strongholds, this negative thinking. Fifth verse, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. God. Not only am I pulling down these strongholds, these crystallized um, negative thoughts that I have been crystallized in, whether it's I'm a victim, I'm losing, I'm defeated, I'm sick, I got all this kind of stuff going on, you know, I'm singing the blues and I'm crying, I'm going to pull that down and what else? I'm going to cast down what? Imagination. What is imagination? My picture maker. I'm going to cast down even my imagination because my imagination gets away from me sometimes and my imagination can take me into the wrong place. My imagination can take me into defeat when God has set me up for victory. But I won't see that victory because I let my imagination take me into the wrong place. So what I got to do with imagination, I need to cast it down, that image, bring that image down in every high thing, that's every thought that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and what am I going to do with it? Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Say, bring it captive. Bring it captive. Bringing it captive. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. What did it say? It, what did it say? Bring uh, every, every enemy captive, every friend captive. No, he said bring every thought captive. So this scripture is telling you simply Paul is just saying what? Control your thinking. You'll never embrace the new until you take control of your thinking. The thoughts that you have allowed yourself to become rooted in, the images that you have allowed yourself to continue to hold, you got to change the very image. That very thing that you see about yourself, and I'm talking about the truthful image, 
Not what you say that you describe to people that sounds good, but I'm talking about the real you that you see when you think about you and you close your eyes and you sit in the theater of your mind and you look at the stage of your mind and that picture that you see of yourself. If it does not line up with what God says, with the word of God, I need to do what? I got to take it captive. Come on, shall take it captive. You got to, and, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Let me take that thought captive. I'm going to bring it into the obedience of Christ. What do you mean I'm going to bring it into the obedience of Christ? I'm going to bring that my thinking into truth. Shout truth. I'm going to bring it into truth. The truth is, is I'm not broke. The word of God does not call me broke. I don't care what's in my bank account right now. I've already got it in the spirit. It's coming into a natural manifestation. My truth is, is that I am not sick by the stripes of Jesus. I am healed. That don't mean that I don't take care of myself now, but I am not sick. I'm going to confess this. I'm going to speak this. That high thing that exalts itself against God, those are things that I need to be delivered from. Mindsets, struggles, addictions, they, they are high. They, they exalt themselves above God. Those are the things that, that are destructive to us, but we feel as if I don't have it, I can't live without it. It becomes an addiction. I'm going to have this thing and it's exalting itself above God. God is saying no. The word of God is saying no. But this thing continues to exalt itself up. So what do I need to do? Bring it captive. Philippians 3 and 13 said, Brothers, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Tell your neighbor, this is what you need to do. Forgetting those things which are behind. Come on. Look at that scripture. Read it with me. Forgetting those things which are behind. Shout, I got to forget some stuff. Forgetting those things which are behind. It's behind you. It's not in front of you anymore. It ain't on the side of you. It is behind. Behind you. Somebody shout is behind. I need to go to the amplified on this one. It is behind me. When you realize that this is behind you, your past is behind you, your failures are behind you, those things are behind you now. When you realize that, then you will let those things go and you can move into the future that God has for you. You can move into the greater things that he has. And they're sitting there right now. He said, uh, those things which are behind in the Amplified, it says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies behind ahead shout i gotta reach for what's in front of me see we fighting too much to get what's behind but paul said i'm gonna reach for what is in front of me and what does he say in the 14th verse he said i press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of god in christ jesus tell the person on the side of you god's got something higher for you God's got something higher for you. It's, a, it's an upward call of God, and it's in Christ Jesus. It's, a, it's an upward call that he has, and he said, I got to press for this thing. Each and every day when you wake up in the morning, you got to be pressing toward the mark, pressing toward the prize. You've got to be pressing towards what God has put in front of you. You've got to be pressing towards a new day. you got to be pressing towards a new destiny. Come on. you got to be pressing towards a new future. Ask the person on the side of you, what are you doing with every hour of the day? I'm going to use this time so that I can press forward. And he said, let us be therefore, uh, let us therefore as many as be perfect, or the scripture Amplified would say be mature uh, be thus minded and if in anything ye be otherwise minded God shall reveal even unto us. I've got to begin to forget what's behind me. I got to change the way that I think. I'm going to 
jump over to the, the seventh verse. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Uh, you don't have any business talking about my mind is in disarray. I'm in confusion. You don't have any business saying that I don't have peace. He said he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. And the peace of God is one of the levels of authority. God's peace. Shout God's peace. God's peace. Well, God's peace will keep your heart. God's peace will keep your mind. When you're getting ready to make decisions and you don't have peace with it. That's God telling you to stand still and wait until you have peace. And he said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Tell your neighbor, think on these things. You've got to change what you're thinking about. What are you thinking about each and every day? What are you spending most of your time thinking about? Where are your thoughts? Where are your thoughts centralized? Where are your thoughts crystallized as it relates to your destiny, as it relates to your future? Well, listen, the Bible gives us a promise, and the promise is, is that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. God's got new reign for you. Shout he's got something new for me. I'm going to go into my new destiny. I'm going to go into my new experience. I'm not going to treat because you are mishandling your destiny. You are mishandling your moment because you're continuing to handle this new moment as if it had anything to do with the past moment. So don't let me mishandle or misappropriate this moment that I'm in right now because God is doing something new. Come on, stand on your feet. God is doing something new in my life. God is doing something wonderful. God is doing something extraordinary for me right now. Come on, shout is new. It's new, it's new, it's new, it's new, it's new, it's new. It's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new walk. It's a new experience. Father God, we come and we declare that we embrace the newness. We embrace this new season. We embrace this new way of thinking. We embrace the new ideas that you have for us. We let go of the past right now. We bring our thoughts captive. Every thought we have that's in disagreement, that's not aligned with the perfect will of God, we bring it captive to the obedience of Christ in the name of Jesus. And we thank you tonight, God. We thank you, Father Lord that we are embracing something new we thank you father for this new season come on shout it's new it's new it's new it's new it's new hallelujah i'm walking in the new i'm talking new you're giving us a new way of thinking you are giving us a new way of living you're giving us a new way of speaking you're giving us a new way of praying you're giving us a new way of worship. And we thank you for the new right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, if you believe that you've got a new day, that you're embracing a new season, I want you to give God the greatest praise you can give him right now. Come on, tell the person on the side of you that this is the last day I will ever cry about my past. This is the last day. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to talk about it anymore. I'm not going to mention it anymore. Take them pictures and put them in the storage. Do what you've got to do. Delete, delete, delete. Get you a new social media account. Whatever you got to do, come on. Shout, I refuse to go back. I refuse to go back. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, it's in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's in Jesus' name. 
It's in Jesus' name. And we thank God for this. Amen. Come on, clap your hands one more time. For this midweek recharge, if you would like to sow into the ministry, you can do so. Cash app, dollar sign, Rich Living 777. Or you can uh, zell Rich Living 777 at gmail.com. Those that like to do that. Uh, we thank you for those of you that support this ministry. Our online viewers, thank you for those of you that support this ministry. Um, and we look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. It's going to be a great Sunday for us as we are concluding African American Heritage Month. It's been an amazing month, a time of learning, a time of reflecting. And we are just grateful to God for these moments that we have. Amen. So we're getting ready to go home. We stand and we dismiss like this. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you. Wherever you are, God is. Wherever we are, God is. Wherever I am, God is. And so it is. Amen. Amen.